Welcome. It has been quite some time since our last chat. Allow me to remind you of what happened. The Brazilian expeditionary force helped the Americans liberate Italy and bridge the Gothic line deeper into Europe. But today, I'd like to rewind a bit and talk about how we got there and take a closer look at some other battles. Summarizing all the diplomacy that led 25,000 men wearing patches of smoking snakes to disembark in Italy to fight the Nazis is no easy task. But the first step to understand what happened is knowing that there was a joint military commission of the United States and Brazil which played the biggest role in it. The most strategic battle wasn't fought on the battlefields but through clever diplomacy because the Brazilian politicians had much in common with the fascist leaders of the Axis countries, including lucrative trade agreements with Nazi Germany. But if the Nazi diplomats were the equivalent of panzer tanks, the American diplomats were the equivalent of tactical nukes. As the years passed, the commission would come to some important agreements, mainly that the Americans would buy minerals, like thorium-rich monazite sand, used in atomic research, and boring, boring rubber that, you know, more workers died extracting than actual Brazilian soldiers died in a whole war, but at least resulted in an economic boom for Brazil. But I digress. The decisive agreement is that the Americans would help build an industrial steel plant that would finally enable the country to grow financially. From here, it was a chain reaction. The American investments and trade agreements made it possible for Brazil to end relations with the Axis, but it resulted in the German Navy targeting Brazilian ships, which resulted in Brazil sending soldiers to combat. The people actually doubted that their government would send troops. They would say that it would only happen the day snakes started smoking, so there would be no better symbol for it. They adopted the slogan, the snakes will smoke, low-key menacing. It's still used by furious Brazilian moms right before punishing their children. Yeah. On a more serious note, the politicians back in Brazil didn't actually want to lose soldiers and face public outrage. President Vargas wanted propaganda, and he would successfully leverage the army's achievements to elevate the country. The Minister of War wanted the army to grow more than anyone else did, but would end up so scared of its political use that he would demobilize it before Vargas even had a chance to parade it. The Americans in Europe expected a well-trained army, but soon found out the Brazilians were helpless. The boys would fight to the death and have a great performance, sure, but they need a ride to the battlefield, training, uniforms, food, equipment, and weapons. Since it wasn't big enough to act as an independent unit, the Brazilians joined the 5th Army of the United States. They were about to be joined by the British 8th Army. These are some of the most international forces in the war. Canadians, New Zealanders, French, Italians, so the Brazilians fit in just fine. Except, they weren't in shape to fight. Were they useless? Far from it. Allow me to tell a short story. The story of the Battle of Camayori. 1944, September the 4th. In the city of Camayori, as a Nazi officer plays an army, his soldiers transport Italian partisans to the scene, the youngest of which being only 16. He's probably a partisan who joined the cause to fight with his brother. He is also there. As the officer reaches the climax of the song, gently pressing the handle, exactly one his subordinates open fire. Even 36 dead and horrified witnesses. Some say the officer kept playing for hours. 13 days after the massacre in Camayori, the Brazilians are headed there, welcomed through a city called Massarossa. There is no sign of enemies. But their presence means the city is no longer under threat, so the cadets can almost feel at home. For the first time they feel at ease, and are even given some extra food by the locals. This was quite important because ever since they got there, they weren't exactly well seen by everyone, for their lack of training, equipment and all. So, the smiles they received from the Italian ladies really made a difference. The Brazilians eventually arrive in Camayoni, together with a motorized division of the American army. 
They are planning on crossing the bridge of Naki, a name the soldiers aren't even sure how to pronounce, so they just settle for Ponte Carioca, uh, Rio de Janeiro's bridge, in a rough translation. These were just poor kids sent on a mission to be heroes for their country. To everyone's dismay, the bridge was destroyed, but there was no other way. The city had a communication center, which had to be captured. And the way in was to go around through the rough terrain, something the motorized unit couldn't do. So this was a job for the Brazilians. This, my friends, is also when they received their baptism in fire, seeing the enemy for the first time. Bullets start flying as the Germans go out of their hiding spots and open fire with heavy machine guns. The soldiers advance through the same place where the locals still hold parades in their honor. The city of Camayote never forgot the sacrifice. The Wehrmacht devised a deadly trap. By ambushing them as they had to go around the bridge, they hoped to easily rout the inexperienced troops with mortars that caused permanent hearing loss to many of them. But these kids actually did it. There was no need to create propaganda. The Brazilians charged right through the enemy fire and captured the Germans so quickly that they didn't actually have a single casualty. It was incredible for ambushed Brazilians who had just arrived two months before without having ever seen combat, without training, nor weapons, nor uniforms, and now they were defeating the German Jaegers, some of the best troops in the whole war. The smoking snakes fulfilled their duty in that day. As the news reached Brazil, the people couldn't believe the initial success. If we analyze it realistically, what these troops lacked for in equipment and training, they had to make up with morale and agility. As Camayote was a key communication center, the victory disrupted Nazi communication in the area and enabled the Allies to coordinate better in the Italian front. Next week we'll continue from here. But your engagement is really important in determining whether we'll be able to continue making these videos. So if you enjoyed watching the episode, subscribe for more, like, comment and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get notifications when you post again. Thank you for watching, have a nice day.